Hey everybody, Jay Westport here, and I was recently on the Do Grow show when Scotty Real asked me, So genetic drift is real? Now, my answer sparked a little bit of controversy, but I based my answer on a peer-reviewed proper frickin' science paper. Peer review is always important, but here are two other important factors about that paper. One, it's recent. The paper in question, which is linked in the show notes down below, was first published in November of 2021. Number two, these tests and analysis were performed on cannabis plants. And this is crucial. Many of the studies we use to predict behavior and reactions in cannabis are not from tests using the actual plant in question. And there are reasons related to the funding and federal legalization that complicate this sort of research, but that's another story for another time. The question was, is genetic drift real? The answer is yes. Now, while I say it is real, I don't think most people understand what is actually being said here, which is why I'm about to explain it. To start, I am a person who goes from clone to clone to clone. I don't keep mother plants, and I have done this with a particular strain for seven years, and in general, for decades. So it did not change the profiles. It did not change the morphology. It did not turn the plant into a mutant. But the possibility exists. And I can hear the chance of, you know, bro science, and I can feel the heat of the torches. But let's unpack what this paper says and then get into the misconceptions about genetic drift. So the title of the paper is Accumulation of Somatic Mutations Lead to Genetic Mosaicism in Cannabis. Big words, right? All right, well, here's a little excerpt from this paper. Quotes, environmental stressors and errors that occur during cellular replication increase the risk for somatic mutations to occur. Cellular stressors generate free radicals causing damage to DNA. The resulting DNA damage creates mutations that are normally repaired by DNA mismatch repair systems. If the stressors induce mutations within the DNA mismatch repair or replication systems, this can lead to irreversible genome breaks and damage and loss of the original genome template. Okay, so that right there explains mutation. It doesn't mean a funky one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. It just says that a mutation is something other than the original genome template. This applies to humans, animals, and plants. Somatic mutation, by another name, would be genetic drift. So let me give a definition for a few of these words, just so we are all clear here. Number one, somatic mutation is, and, and I'm reading this part, I'm not this smart, but a somatic mutation describes any alteration at a cellular level in somatic tissue occurring after fertilization. And by the way, this is the fertilization, egg cell type thing, not your NPK fertilization. So describes any alteration at a cellular level in somatic tissues occurring after fertilization. Somatic mutations are a normal part of aging and occur throughout an organism's life cycle either spontaneously as a result of errors in DNA repair mechanisms or as a direct response to stress. Mutations occurring early in development can cause mosaicism within the gene line impacting organism development. The impacts of mosaicism uh, on overall health due to mutations depends on the specific gene the mutation affects. And number two, Genetic mosaicism is defined as the presence of two or more cell lineages with different genotypes arising from a single zygote in a single individual. Gen genetic mosaicism is a postzygotic mutation. So again, fancy words in there. 
zygote. Uh, in flowering plants, it refers to an egg cell and a sperm cell fusing to form the first diploid cell, the zygote. The zygote is the progenitor stem cell that gives rise to other development. But to rewind, gen genetic mosaicism is two or more different coatings for cells on the same plant. These differences occur after fertilization of the egg cell, which makes sense because with clones, there is no fertilization of eggs. They are continually clones. So now that we understand somatic mutation and genetic mosaicism, we can talk about genetic drift in our clones. Number one. Whole genome sequencing has revealed genetic diversity within a single cannabis plant, aka DNA coding errors or mutations. Two, the genetic mosaicism hypothesis now applies to cannabis. It has been applied to various plants and tree species tree species in prior research so the thought of this is not new it's not exclusive to cannabis we're just kind of finding out hey it also applies to cannabis so number three the amount of these differences were unique to the lower mid and top sections of the plant little gold nugget this information would also suggest the best place on the plant to take your clones because they would have the fewest somatic mutations number four because soma somatic mutations are a normal part of aging and occur throughout an organism's life cycle keeping mother plants for an extended period of time can increase accumulation of somatic mutations so Mutations, or by another name, genetic drift, does occur. We've demonstrated this now. But it does not imply what many people think. And as this paper will also point out, just because an error in coding DNA occurred and wasn't repaired, it does not mean that it will manifest itself in a noticeable form to the farmer. With the amount of somatic mutations cataloged in this study and in this paper, we can gather that the overwhelming majority of these coding errors do not lead to anything that would create a different looking plant with a detectable change in growth rates. But the possibility exists. And since the majority of random mutations are deleterious, uh, meaning deleting, taking away, not beneficial, the long-term effect of their accumulation is a decline in plant vigor. The phenomenon is problematic for the long-term genetic preservation of elite individuals. Whether somatic mutations are beneficial or deleterious, it is well known that they occur and can lead to genetic diversity even within a single plant. So the genetic mosaicism hypothesis states that individual plants become genetically diverse because of the accumulation, again, read into that over time, so become diverse because of the accumulation of spontaneous mutations occurring randomly as independent branches grow. Again, that gold nugget, th thus them suggesting where on the plant to take your clones. So... While this phenomenon is often neglected during the preservation of clone lines, it could significantly impact long-term genetic fidelity, especially in species with higher than average mutation rates. So, all right, I'm going to take a breath here. Whew, I'm going to stop. Stop with the science stuff because I could keep going on for 20 minutes, the, you know, defending the position of genetic drift based upon this paper. But to read this paper for yourself, just go into the show description down below, click the link, you can read the entire thing for yourself. I want to talk real quick about what genetic drift is not. Genetic drift is often blamed for dudding or decreased yields over time. This is often not a result of genetic drift, although decreased vigor is the most common side effect of genetic drift. 
But if a plant has a viroid or a pathogen, this can reduce yields over time and even just from run to run. Often this is to blame, not genetic drift. But if people aren't getting plants tested for things like hoplite and viroid, what are they supposed to think when yields continually get worse and worse over time? They tend to blame genetic drift. So genetic drift also gets blamed for the change in appearance of a plant. But this is not taking into account epigenetics. In botany, epigenetics describes how external factors can turn on or turn off certain traits of phenotypic expression. This is not a change or mutation of DNA. It is turning some things on and turning other things off with the existing DNA sequences or genotype. Here are a few, again, real world, put it into my head. Give me an example. Here are a few good examples of epigenetics in action. If you take a couple of clones and you put one under an LED light and another under an HPS light, you might see a slight difference in the plant's expression. And that's not genetic drift. It is the plant reacting to the stimuli given, in this case, light spectrum. If one plant is grown in good pH soil, but the other clone is grown in poor pH soil, you may see different expressions. Again, epigenetic, not genetic drift. The plant is responding to its environmental and root zone conditions. And I guess just to put a bow on it, the easiest, most extreme example would be taking a clone, grow one out by the beach in Washington, and grow the other in Colorado at high altitudes and low humidity. Those clones, although from the exact same plant, will have different expressions. Epigenetic, not genetic drift. And the same can be said for influence over the flavor and aroma profiles. These things can be impacted by environment, and they can vary from grow to grow, even in the same grow space. The truth is, there are a lot of factors that can contribute to one run being different from the last, or why the clone from the same plant produces differently for different growers. But... At the end of the day, genetic mutations are common. They occur more frequently as the plant ages, and this meets the definition of genetic drift. It's just not what you thought it was. So if you're interested in watching the full interview I did with the leading author on this paper back in December of 2021, the link to that is in the show description that was on the Future Cannabis Project. But I hope you learned something today, maybe about what genetic drift is or isn't, how it kind of functions, and why actually keeping mother plants for a long time might be less beneficial than going clone to clone to clone. Because again, you give it more time to accumulate these somatic mutations. But I'll leave you that to chew on, ask me anything you got, read the paper linked in the show description. I appreciate your time. And again, I hope you learned something. I hope you share this with people. I hope we can clear up whether genetic drift is real or not. I say yes. Just not what you think it is. But you can find me on chadwestport.com. Also over on Instagram, chad.westport. And right here on YouTube channel, Chad Westport. So thanks for hanging out. And until the next one, everybody. Party on. Party on.